If it is true that God has called you, then there is a guarantee that you are going to be blessed in the calling. To defend the truth. And my die, the die of my destiny is already cast. This is the path I will follow till my dying day. The Bible says, when well, men slept, an enemy came. But well, enemies will not come on my watch because I am not about to sleep. Jesus died and among many of his by the byproducts or the impacts of his sacrifice is that you may be anointed. You are asking the Lord to unlock the fellowship of the anointing. The believer is no longer natural and we want to begin to work in that dimension that Jesus died to bring us into. It doesn't matter if you are starting as a bricklayer like Joseph. Ensure nobody tampers with your dream. Hide it. Hide the dream where depression will not get to. Hide the dream where circumstances will not touch. I mean, hide it. Put it somewhere where your afflictions cannot touch. Your dream needs to be intact if you win. The difference between a pioneer and a non-pioneer is this. If you are not a pioneer and you enter into an existing ministry, it means that God is giving the leadership of that ministry the responsibility of determining your location. That's part of the package that God had in mind before he allocated you into that mission. Okay? But if you are going to pioneer, you must understand that you will need to know what he wants you to do. You also need to know where he wants you to do it. So you were convinced that you were to follow me. You were in Imo State trying to arrange your accounting pro. <laughs> he was trying to settle his life there. And what exactly did God tell you that made you come back? He said, back? come back to Benue State and work among the youths. So I spent six months praying and then I started having dreams where you will give me an assignment to pray for somebody in the dreams, in the visions of the night. And on, in one of those uh, dreams, when I began to engage the assignment you gave me, a wind came and carried me from the ground. And as, as I was being elevated by the wind, I was hearing years, 2010, 2011, 2012, and it was counting as all of that will happen. So it informed my philosophy of assignments, duties, and responsibilities. Received this conviction, me and him were already friends. Yes, we we're already close friends. So and he now came back from his youth service and told me now that the relationship has changed, that he's no longer friends. We are not friends. You see, it's a difficult, if it's a very serious matter for you to call somebody or I'm your father in the Lord. In my own opinion, I believe it's a big matter. Even if that is the case, when I'm speaking in the public, I say, one of my friends are here, is here, some of my friends are here. I'm more comfortable with that kind of description. Because, you know, I know a preacher that cannot preach for 35 minutes before without saying, one of my son, you know, my son there, my son here, yeah, my son, my son. <laughs> If you know what this matter is, you will not be quick to, to be saying such things. You will not be quick to be saying such things. So he came back from Imo State and said the relationship has changed. God has given instruction to follow. I've heard that many times. So whenever I hear it, I don't believe it. The only way I believe it is if over time, your actions does not contradict what you told me. It can be two years. It can be four years. Until, because it's God that told you to follow me. Until God now tells me that I sent him to follow you. Sometimes it can be two years. Sometimes it can be three years. We will still be, I will not believe you. <laughs> A two cannot work together except they be agreed. When God now bears witness with my spirit, then I will now place you. That waiting period, maybe he came and then it took two years before he was placed. How many years did it take? From It took two years from 2007 to 2009. Okay, two years. The major disruption. Now, let me tell you something. 
within that two years, many people that came, between the two years or three years, as the case may be, for confirmation to be established, they changed their mind. So you will know that God did not send this one. Now, when we were much younger, I had not married my wife yet. One of my friends came to me with a lady he was dating and said, God had spoken to them that when they get married, that they don't have a pioneering calling, that they were going to be part of what God will use me to do. I, I know them. They don't like prayer. So I now told him, I told them that this thing means you people need to adjust to. Are you with me? Because uh, the, fa- the major fabric of what we are called to do has to do with intercession. And the guy was so allergic to prayer. You know, I, I, was, I, I served in Kano. And their family house was in Kano. So when we hold those meetings where we pray for money to evening, he will come in the morning. He will pray for 30 minutes and say, he has something in Sabongeri. Yeah. For the whole number of years I was there, he was always having something in Sabongeri. There was something in Sabongeri. There's something in, in Brigade. He never finished one prayer meeting with us. Now they had come to me and said the Lord had led them. I said, well, I need to be frank with you. You know my lifestyle in terms of devotions and all of that. And I've not seen that level of coming. Can you, can you endure? Can you? Because ministry, if we say we want to do ministries, we are sold out. They say no, they know that we are just. Yes. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, four years later, they came back to me again and said, God spoke. And the Lord said they should start a church in a certain city. I said, ah, great. Because I knew that they would not be able to cope. No, sincerely, I knew they would not cope. Then I now came to Makodi. We now started it. Started this ministry. So the church that they started, one of the workers in that church, his relative came to visit him. So he told the person, I'll be in church when you come into the city, to come to the church. That is relative that went to visit that church. Knows me. So when he came, he saw it was a serious workers meeting. So he sat at the back. This same pastor that said to me those days that God has asked them to come and work under me. His church members now asked him, there was a time you were close to this man. What happened? This guy that came from the village, he was listening. Okay. The guy said that me, I wanted him to be his assistant pastor. So he refused. That's the reason why I stopped talking to him. See me see Bohala. This other guy that came from the village heard it and came out and was wondering and then made contacts and said, See what the, is this what happened? I didn't feel there was any need to explain to him. I said, let the will of God be done. The same person took my name to another minister of the gospel. Lied to him. When we now met at the airport, he knew that maybe if I engage that minister, the truth will come out. So he came and distracted everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Distracted. I didn't know what he was doing. Are you there? This other minister that he went to tell all these things now went to preach somewhere in a congregation like this and saw a young guy and called him and asked him to stand up during his ministration. That is there any minister of the gospel in this country that can tell you stand here and you will stand? He said, yes. He now mentioned my name. That minister now became angry. This minister that is angry is angry because the other minister had told him about me in a negative light. Are you there? 
And then he now started saying, these small boys that call themselves uh, apostles. The moment he said that, the people in the meeting left. He only had like 20 people. Are you still following me? When I and my wife were now traveling to Lagos, we were in the business class cabin with this minister that spoke. We, he doesn't, that's when we discovered he doesn't know how I look like. But he had spoken about me because of. Many years later. You know, God doesn't act quickly. This calling, you know what they call calling? It fights people. Calling. Many, many years later. It became clear that God did not choose him. What is going to differentiate you with the next person? Calling. So this matter is a serious matter. I've seen people rise and fall just because of calling. If it is true, if the guy had followed me as as if he said, we would have had problem here. Because these ones, these guys that you are seeing, they are men of God. These ones are men of God. We would have had pro- you know God. Hey, Jesus Christ. God delivered me from evil. So these are the real people he brought, not that one. And more than 10 years ago has proven it. You can call yourself and start something. Initially, it might even look that I see something is happening. It's after 10 years, it will be clear that there is no call from God that is behind it. God will help you waste your time. So on the issue of a calling, you must be sure the location God is deploying you. Because it's going to shape your future. When you came, did you know we'll be standing on a platform like this? <laughs> it was unimaginable. So that's the third point, the third symptom. And I will bless thee. There is a guarantee. Yes, you are released. There is a guarantee that God will bless you. There is a guarantee that God will bless you in a calling. If it is true that God has called you, then there is a guarantee that you are going to be blessed in the calling. I was taking a look of, of how much money we spend on tickets in a year. If you are not strong in your heart and you see that those those, those figures, the blood pressure might go up. But all of those resources came from where they call it. Today we are building a hospital. Today alone, 48 million has been withdrawn to buy equipment for this hospital. God said we were going to have an apostolic coordination center in the city of Makodi. He made it happen. He said we were, we were going to have a television station made it happen. Are you there? He said we were going to have uh, international missions. These things I'm telling you, he spoke in 2005, 25th of July. We just wrote it on his piece of paper. That paper that Pastor Dan now found, I don't know where he got it from. When you check that paper, you will see that everything that God said we were going to do, we we're doing it. And that was phase one. We have finished phase one. Everything in phase one has happened. Then God started with phase two. It's in phase two that this hospital was captured. 
In phase two, there is a day secondary school that is in phase two. That one has not happened, but you will see it happen. In phase two, international missions became part of phase two. The first pilot nations were South Africa, Ghana, and the United Kingdom. How many of you watch our Ghana people on Facebook? Have you seen our Ghana people on Facebook? Ghana. They, if you have not visited our South African branch, you don't know worship. When those guys begin to work, you know I've gone to 70% of our branches, not 100%, but 70%. There is no branch among our ranks that knows worship like South Africa. If you go there, you won't come back. You will just ask them to look for a place. <laughs> Jesus! Pilot centers were United Kingdom, South Africa, and Ghana. You were all here when I announced it, before it started happening. God has opened all of that. Phase two, if we finish this hospital, we have finished phase two. Now it's phase three. He said, I will bless you. I will what? So the question is this. Whether or not you become blessed is determined by how faithful you are in the placement of your calling. If there is a lack of faithfulness in the placement of your calling, it will affect your blessing. It will affect your blessing. If there is faithfulness in the placement of your calling, God is going to bless you. So the third symptom of a calling is that one of the ways you know you are in alignment in a calling is the blessing that accompanies it. You begin to see God going out of his ways to make provisions available to fund that intent of his that he has committed to you. Even when we started, we never lacked money to do the thing God called us to do. And I can tell you confidently that the expenditure per month when we started was a hundred thousand. In hundred thousand, if we have a hundred thousand, we can run the ministry for one month. So those of us that were working class made a hundred thousand naira available. We were running. I don't want to. Okay, let me tell you the real matter. It was in the place of prayer. The Lord spoke to me and said, we should give him a hundred thousand every month, me and my wife. So when we gave, if we give this hundred thousand, it means that our car should not get spoiled and nobody should fall sick. Because if any of the above happens, we will not have what it takes to go through the month. We have accepted to give God the 100,000. That 100,000 was sufficient to take care of the ministry in one month. Are you there? So, when we started giving this 100,000, one month after we started giving the 100,000, my executive from the city of Abuja came to visit our depot. And when they came to visit our depot, we had interactions, we had, yes, we had interactions. They asked for pandediam, I took them where to eat pandediam. And then they went back. When they went back, our chief executive asked that they should bring my fire. They had denied me promotion for four years. And when they brought my fire, the man looked at my fire and saw that I'd been denied promotion, he called the head of admin and asked him to give me all my promotions and restore 
my status to what I'm supposed to be and pay me all the arrears. I just gave the 100,000 for one month. Are you there? The man they called to change the records was the man that vowed to me that I will never be promoted. Was the same man that they summoned and gave a directive to effect my promotion. Promotions come out in January, but that my own promotion came out that day in June. It was backdated. Are you there? So the next year I became eligible for the next promotion. It was back. The money that I used to build that my house is that the areas of that promotion that they gave me that I used to build that house. And then because of the promotion, my salary increased. So even though someone falls sick or the car has problem, in spite of the 100,000 we gave, we had enough money to take care of ourselves. Are you, are you following me? You are not following me. You are not. I'm, I'm telling you real life issues so that you will know that if it is a call we are committing to, there must be a blessing. Don't hear any other story otherwise. When you see somebody claiming to be attending to a call and you don't see signs of God's commitment, ask him, are you, did I call you? No, that, you are not with me. You are not. Did, did they ask you to do what you are doing? You, the other day in my village, somebody came and said, he saw, as he was all and about the calling, he saw Satan with a fork flying. And said, when he finished telling the story, I said, is it true that you were called to do this thing? Because we are doing more dangerous things than you are doing, but we have not seen Satan fly. We have seen, instead, we have seen God's faithfulness push us forward push us forward in a way that we know that he's the one that is at work. He said, I will bless you. It's not as if you prayed for it. Blessing becomes a consequence of aligning to the calling. He didn't say, okay, now that I've called you, you will labor in prayer. Then I, No, he said, I will. What? Yes. Guess what happened? The next year, I was eligible for promotion again. The man went and brought my file. He, said, he asked for the file again. So the next year, I was promoted. So I had two promotions in two years. And that was how my status was restored. I was flying in the ranks. And I never missed a promotion again until I resigned. Never missed it again until I resigned. As at the time I resigned, the ministry did not need my support to survive. The ministry had found its footing and the oasis of grace had attracted sufficient resources to keep the ministry standing without my own impute. Are you there? So I stepped out on the orders of Jesus. I did not step out, step out because we became comfortable as a ministry. I stepped out on the orders of Jesus. And when I stepped out on the orders of Jesus, I was wondering how to feed because there were people that God had given to me to take care of. And when he asked me to stop work, he did not ask the people to leave. So I went to him in prayer and fasting and said, okay, you asked me to stop work. My last salary was 1.2 million. Naira every month. And that is exclusive of my allowances. That's my basic salary. My housing allowance at that time was 15 million a year. And you know, there's no house that I rent in Makati for 15 million. I feel like you need to be mad to resign from that job. You need to be mad. If I had waited and be become a management staff, my housing would have been 19 million a year. And by monthly, you have allowances in addition to the 1.2 million. I could buy a car any month of my choosing. And Jesus said, step aside. 
You know, those days we felt that the best thing that happened to us was the job that we were doing. That there's no... Yes, in the Nigerian context, I was earning the salary of a brigadier general. Yes. As at the time of my resignation. It was foolishness to say you want to resign. But you see, the things of God look like foolishness in the eyes of men. It was on the orders of Jesus that I stepped aside. And when I stepped aside, I went to Jesus for prayers. And I said, you asked me to leave the job. You did not ask the inhabitants to leave the house. So what arrangement do you have for upkeep of this great house? You know what he told me? 